Hi, I'm Alex Warford, I'm a systems engineer, and in this short video I want to show you how you can ingest data from Kafka into Druid. Druid is a time series OLAP engine, and uh, it it's came from the ad tech world, and did, as did Kafka, and um, so it scales beautifully, it's really, really fast. Um, so if you've got time series data, you want it to be interactive, uh, you know, Druid's definitely worth a look. And, I, and the data source I'm using here is from my IDS. It's um, stuff happening on my network, and I'm using Zeek uh, to generate that. The data is JSON uh, docs, and um, those are, we'll, we'll look at what it takes to uh, ingest those into Druid. So Druid takes events. So an event has three things, really. It has uh, a timestamp on it. It has dimensions um, that these are, these are sort of attributes, um, usually strings that you would want to group and aggregate by. And then there are uh, metrics, so measures rather. The, these are this might be even as simple as a count. Um, this could be you know the number of bytes sent. Those those types of things. So things that you want to um, add up uh, sums. Those those would be your um, metrics. Now, the, um, there are a bunch of different services running in Druid. I don't want to get into the weeds and go through each one of them, but this one is worth mentioning. So we've got an indexer service. This is called the middle manager, and this is taking data in a row format. This is sort of the raw JSON documents, and it's converting them into segments that contain a bunch of data for a period of time. This is a summarized data set in a columnar format, and this is so um, compressed. Um, so there are all sorts of tricks that are used that are borrowed from the, the search world. Um, there's things like dictionary encoding. So instead of storing, say, United States of America, you would just store an integer and keep a dictionary of all the countries at the top. And, the, and the, 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 uh, this amount of data on the disk would be a lot less. And I've heard anything from you know, 10x to 100x uh, reduction in, in data footprint um, when, you, when you store data in Druid. Now, once the segment has been created, it's written off. Um, uh, the segments are written to the historicals. And when a, a query is um, executed against this, it's um, a combination of the data that's in memory in the indexer and the historical data. Those are combined. So it gives you near real time um, data at, at really, really fast response times. You know, less than a second. So let's have a quick look and see um, an example of this, of, of how, how um, this data is compressed. So on the left side, let's, I'm going to move this over a bit so my head's not in the way. Look, on the left side here, we have um, the raw transactions coming through, and these are right down to the millisecond time. The, the, the time millisecond is, is actually not that interesting, and it bloats the data. So look, we've got 10 records on the left, and those get squished down to three on the right, and the time gets rounded. So this is um, whether or not it was clicked. Um, you can see that Bieber was clicked one time there, zero there, zero there. Um, so the sum of those is one. Um, so this this um, they're color coded, right? This purple thing. There's three of those, and and just one in the, in the summarized uh, data. So we've got that. We've got some dictionary encoding. We have some uh, bit mapping going on that, that enable really fast um, search. And uh, this is sort of how how it's done. Okay, let's have a look in practice and, and see what this looks like to add a feed. So this is the, the Druid uh, GUI right now. I'm going to pop over to load data and we'll start a new spec and I'm going to select um, Apache Kafka. I'm going to give it the name of my bootstrap servers. I'm going to give it all three because um, then if uh, one of them was to fail, it would, uh, it would know um, how to uh, connect to the uh, surviving brokers. So one, two, three. All right, and the topic we'll, we'll choose is just HTTP. This is HTTP traffic coming across my network. And look, if I, if I hit preview here, look, this is, um, it's um, going to 
start to make sense of this data, um, we can see, you know, I've got a timestamp there. These are these are epoch millis, and uh, it should hopefully figure out um, that those are epoch millis. Now, for some things, you can use like even a sketch. There's something called a sketch, which if you don't need, um, you know, 100% accurate results, if 98% is good enough, and you're you're um, tuning for really fast responses, you can store a sketch, like a a little uh, summary of the data instead of all the data. So there's you know things that you can do um, to, to optimize for performance. We're not going to bother with any of that right now. Right now. Oh look, you can see the time stamp has been recognized. Um, so that's nice. Uh, we're not going to do any transformations or any, any filtering. We're just going to sort of take it as it comes because I'm pretty confident. Now, um, one thing that is worth pointing out here, look at this query granularity hour. That's important. This is going to determine how, how big your segments are time-wise. Okay. Um, and that is pretty much it. Okay. So, um, We'll just uh, publish this, and it's gonna. So that wizard created this spec. Um, this is kind of like a summary of everything that we just uh, determined, and we can submit that. And now, what it's gonna do? It's gonna ingest that data. It's gonna index it, and uh, shortly it will be available. So look, you can see this one's pending. The others are already running. So this is how we took data out of Kafka and we made it available in uh, Druid. So now we can build interactive dashboards and those types of things. Now Druid will allow you to connect to it using a RESTful endpoint. There is a, what do you call it, JDBC? There's a JDBC uh, driver. So there's a you know, few different options. Uh, it will take SQL, uh, so you can write you know, SQL uh, statements in, into Druid. Um, and uh, here, let's, ha let's have a look at a dashboard um, that I was playing with. So here, yeah. so this is this is the point that I'm trying to get here is that you can take a bunch of data and you can filter it really fast. So if I wanted to see, look, I know I happen to know that my son's uh, laptop, no, his his Mac is uh, has a uh, origin host of 10.0.1.13. So then I can I can filter just for that, and this shows me where you know what what hosts he's talking to and this one here you know is there's a lot of traffic gone to this host and um, he spends a lot of time on FaceTime uh, talking to his significant other uh, so that's her IP address look this these are his uh, DH uh, sorry DNS queries for example but this is all very fast and very interactive and super easy um, to put together. And so if you do have time series data, it's in, it's in Kafka, you know, Druid's your friend. It's, it's going to allow you to slice and dice this data and do it in a, in a very interactive way. And uh, well, I hope that was interesting and um, good luck. Cheers.